Welcome to Pod Watcher, the official podcast of Watcher Entertainment. I'm Ryan Bergara. I'm Shane Lede. And I'm Stephen Lim. And this is a show where we talk about whatever is on our minds every week. This week we dive into the Golden Bachelor. Coffee. And birthdays. What 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 episode is this? The fourth? The fourth episode of Pod This is Watcher? where we finally get really comfortable. It is where we let things slip that we shouldn't. Mm. That would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was your guys' weekend, by the way? Starting there. Yeah. Hmm. This is we're filming this on a Monday. What so, did I do? We are. Which is nice because people are going to be listening to this on a Monday. I, had a, I had a weekend. Oh well, yeah, what'd you I, do? I've been gone. I was in Miami. I don't Whoa. Re- I had a bad experience in Miami for some reason. I think it's I don't think it's an indicative of how cool the place is. I think I just had a bad trip there. Yeah, probably, because it was pretty sick. Oh, nice. What'd you do? Uh so we went on this trip because um, Simu wanted to get his Canadian friends and U.S. friends and bring them all together. Yeah. In Florida. In Florida. Nice. And we had a little bit of like a sports off. So we played like flag football and basketball. And this sounds like the worst. Soccer. Oh, that sounds pretty fun. You know, and then and then we went out and had nice dinners and had, had a good time. But the most interesting part of my Any trip, injuries, by the way? Oh, my gosh. He tore his Achilles. Who did? Simu. No, he didn't. I'm not kidding. Is wait, this... are you fucking serious? Yeah. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. Wait. I don't know why I'm laughing. It's actually, it was it was horrible. Wait a second. Are we allowed to put that in the podcast? Yeah, yeah so... no, he, he no, he he posted this morning oh my about it. God. Wait, which, which was it flag football or basketball? It was basketball. And See, he, this is. Oh. So uh, it, the craziest thing is when you, when that happens, like it's a non-contact yeah, it is. And he was just running. Did he do the thing? Did he say the thing where he thought someone kicked him in the back? Yes, he was like, "Who?" He was like, "Who hit me?" Yeah. And and we were like, "Oh, nobody touched you." And, Dude, then, we, and then that's when we knew that's the worst. That's the bad. telltale sign. Kobe said that when he tore his Achilles. He, what he thought somebody kicked him, and Kevin Durant said the same thing too. He's like, "Oh, yeah. someone just kicked me." And now, when if I ever feel like someone kicked me while I'm running, I'm gonna be like, it's "Oh, over. fuck, it's over." Yeah. I. What does it mean? When that happens, when you snap your Achilles, it it's a rupture. Is that in your leg? It's I guess right that here. Makes it's sense the back of the heel. It's the back thing right here. Connects your calf, I believe, to your foot. So mm. when you're running, is it like a rubber band? Essentially. So when you're running, the actual force of it snapping sa- feels like the sensation of someone kicking you in the back of the leg, and then all of a sudden you can't really move your foot. Mm, that's bad. Yeah, it, that was it. Was that bad? Um, but he took it. I mean, like he took it like a champ. He like was super chill about it. We finished the weekend off. Um, we even went to a nightclub on the last night. He was in a boot. Jesus. And we were just all walking around. And, I would know, not have done guarding that. Guarding him. I would, and, have, uh, I would have been in like a hospital bed or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, he was. He just kind of wanted it to still be a great trip, which it was. It was, Dude, a, it was a wonderful trip. That's so wild. That's actually one of my worst fears is snapping my Achilles just because I've seen it happen so many times now. Yeah. Especially as you get into your 30s. Well, that's uh, why they say like, and and sorry to talk about sports. Oh, I'll I'll stop the sports talk, but that's why they say like, it, you got to get into golf. Well, th- I think this is an interesting <laughs> jumping off point. You got to get into. I don't golf. know if this is so much a talk about sports as it is like aging. It is, yeah. Because that's why I actually don't play basketball that much anymore because I'm too scared of getting injured. It's not worth it at this point because I can't move around. I mean. I may think I can move around the way I, I used to be able to in my 20s. And maybe I can, but maybe not for a long amount of time before I injure myself. Because I'm pretty injury prone now. Oh, yeah. Like, I've sprained my ankles, I think, eight times on both ankles. I've gone to the hospital like three to four times for it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's for all basketball. Yeah, you shouldn't move. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, I have, like, a playing style that's conducive to getting injured. Spe- attacking the rim. Also, like, I'm a smaller dude, so when I jump and I'm up in the air for a long time. Yeah, you're up there forever. Yeah. It's a, a lot of time. Well, uh, this is a, a little known fact about Ryan. He's actually athletic. <laughs> and man can jump. I I mean, you used to be able to dunk. I'm 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 like, what, four inches taller than you probably? I think what, so. three, three or four. Yeah. And you can probably reach like four or five inches higher than I can. Well, I can't, dun- I can't dunk anymore, but I can still grab the rim. I just can't dunk anymore. anymore. Okay, maybe not four or five inches anymore. The But... The thing is, when you're up that high and you're a smaller dude, it gives a lot of opportunity for people to go under you so they could undercut you or you just land on a foot from that high up. And it really fucking hurts. Like, yeah. I can't believe I'm not broken my ankle yet, uh, but I made it out. I haven't broken a bone before. Don't, don't say that now. You're going to jinx yourself. That's true. Not gonna, well, the whole 
the whole weekend I was scared. I was having nightmares actually leading up to it that somebody was going to injure themselves and, and Whoa, low and bold happen. Maybe you have a sixth sense or something. Well, mostly it was just me like tearing my my ACL. People tear their football. Achilles getting out of bed though. Like they'll yes, stand it's up. It's a freak accident. It's a freak accident. You, it's not really something that it wasn't you know his fault or anything. You can't no, really you, control it. You it could could just, happen to me. You could just run. You could be walking and it just just pops no one really understands why it happens like in terms of like the circumstances i don't think it could happen to me i think it could no because you've you've injured yourself walking by just tripping yeah i tripped and fell i i've injured myself recently by just standing that's how old we're getting i actually injured myself recently just by standing sh- no by shifting my position in bed i i shifted <laughs> from my i'm a side sleeper so I, sh- I shifted from the left side to the right side and i think i did it a little too aggressively and i just turned i over rotated a little bit and th- i felt a twinge in my right shoulder and i think i i think i fucked up my rotator cuff oh oh and i had to come to the like kind of sobering realization that i had i'm now at the age where i injure myself sleeping I think you guys have ruined your bodies with sports because you're both about five years younger than me. (laughs) That's true. And when I was, even now, I think my body is, doesn't seem to give me as many problems as it has been giving you for the past five years of your life. Yeah, it's because you've lived an existence wrapped essentially in bubble wrap. (laughs) Yeah, basically, (laughs) I think so. He's just been in VR town with a headset on, (laughs) nothing nothing back and half into him there. (laughs) And honestly, it's probably for the best. One of the, the, if I could go back in time, I'd thank my mom for not letting me play football. I'd have like arthritis in all my joints and everything. I don't think you'd be a good football guy. I, I'm actually the right height for a running back, which is the position I played in flag football. Because I played football in middle school and our, our, on our team. Cause tackle? They, did, they didn't allow you play ta- tackle football? They, they oh. did not allow tackle at middle school level. But then in high school, the next progression is tackle football. But you need to have a permission slip signed by your parent because it's a contact sport and obviously super dangerous. And so if I were to transfer, being I'd be over, I'd be in the same position. I'd be a running back because running backs are all around my height and build. It's harder to tackle them. Yeah, most people don't really care about football at all. Although flag football was just added to the Olympic Games. Did you guys see that? Hmm. I didn't see that. I can like see. football. And so like all these NFL players are like trying to come out of retirement to be like, hey, hey, hey add, you know, Rob Gronkowski. Would you still like, watch the NFL if it was flag football? I would. No, I wouldn't. I think flag football is fun to watch still. It's fun to play. I don't think I need to see people ta- get tackled. Maybe that's a hot take. I don't think that's part of the reason why I like football. They've done a good job of mono- like making, eventizing watching sports. That's the thing. It's the, it's the modern day like Coliseum event. Well, you have a Sunday. They own Sundays. Like whereas basketball and baseball, they've they've have this. They have they made the mistake of it being kind of like well, we don't know which day it's going to be this week. It's going to be a couple yeah. of days this week. Whereas football, you could get people to wrap their mind around like, okay, I'm going to spend a day watching football. What do you, do you have anything like that, Shane? That's eventized. Like, there's is there something you do every week? The Gilded Age is starting up again soon on HBO. I haven't checked that out. I've talked to you about this offline. Those kind of period dramas, <laughs> yeah, they always kind of feel like the same fucking. This show. one's great. It's got Carrie Coon, and Carrie Coon is just playing a. Her character is just a nasty woman. I think basically yeah. she's yeah. a rich nasty woman, and she hates everyone. Nice. Um, and a lot of times the show just pushes in on her face, like when someone bests her in some way, or she yeah. feels slighted, she'll just be like. So it's like real housewives. <laughs> yeah, kind of. It's pretty funny. I really like it. Can okay. I ask you a question, Shane? Yeah. About, about shows that you like. Well, what about them? Well, like, what are your what is your rating system? And maybe you don't have like a formalized one, but like, how do you decide if you like a show or not? Because sometimes I feel like you like a show just because it makes you laugh in a weird way. And I'm like, well, that's such a bad a strange show. Question. But... I don't know. No, I th- I think it's uh, if it keeps my attention. I don't know. Because there's you care about continuity. Do you care wow. about like technical, like like writing, like what it, like what matters to you? I think you it's know? the whole package, really. I think you're pretty open minded when it comes to content. There's like a lot I, of things I like that to, appeal to you. I like to look into stuff that I don't know about, or like you know, yeah, a lot I, of I stuff do, there. Yeah, I, I like to dabble with stuff that seems like something I wouldn't like or that I'm not used to. Um, I don't know. I've got a pretty varied palette, though. This this is actually a good segue into something I did want to talk about and I forgot about it. Have you? Are you guys watching Golden Bachelor? 
I started it. Dude, it is incredible. What? No, wait, wait. What? So, can you explain? Do you watch The Bachelor at all or no? I've seen maybe two episodes or two show, two seasons. <laughs> <laughs> That's <is> wow. crazy. <laughs> That's what he looks like when yeah. he's watching The Bachelor. Yeah. 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 He I've like watched. In a row as he loses it. Maybe two seasons, two full seasons of it. And I actually really enjoyed the one season of Bachelor in Paradise that I watched. But then Bip. it's like, it's, it kind of gets old, so I stopped watching that. I never got on the Bachelor in Paradise train. You've never gone on there? Oh, I thought you were I know some people actually like Bachelor in Paradise more. They only watch The Bachelor so they could understand the characters. That's where they just hang them. around and smooch, right? Essentially. And yeah. I'm not there for the smooching. I'm there for the storylines and the love. Every Bachelor <laughs> season has like some stupid ass. They have like tropes that they do. Like there's usually some sort of villain that they will find and then the producers will just make it seem like this person's the worst on earth yeah yeah um, okay so the golden bachelor what is the premise the of that? old man it's an older man oh so he's like on a bunch of golden he's Betty's. like 70 i think or 69 <laughs> Wait, he's 69 well, no. years old yeah i gotta see this now i really <laughs> you got me it's really heartwarming it's good it so gets basically, you right off the bat yeah he, widow he a lost widow. his wife to cancer or like, a widower his the story was so a widow's a lady no, a widow's a lady. No, a widow's a man as well. A widower. It, what? I guess. I a know. widower sounds like you died and caused somebody to be widowed. A widower does sound like you've killed someone. Yeah, like a murderer. Yeah. Like no, a widow. They I'm say a widower it. if if it's like a. Uh, can I pull up a I want to see this. Uh, this is what this man but, Oh, he's like a great too. looking guy. They'd saved up. They bought her dream house on like the water. And then she got sick like a month into the house. And then she passed away and so like there's this like package they film they always do like these like little packages at the beginning to let you know what the guy like what his life is and how he got here sometimes it's a big package <laughs> yeah for him i won't <laughs> could i could i explain what happened to this man's wife oh, oh my god he's 72 he looks great he looks right great, he right? does not look you're not, 72 you're not jesse palmer are you no no i'm not i'm not jesse no. palmer who follows us on instagram i think what that dude is an absolute fucking unit jesse we're big fans he also hosts a lot of those baking challenges he also uh calls football games sometimes does he well. oh yeah i've seen him on there nice oh, guy that jesse palmer he yeah. should be he should be the only person we allow to be a guest on this show why is that i don't know it feels like a good rule well, i was thinking we'd have some employees and stuff on no this. well but anyways yeah like he, there's like a footage there's footage of him like standing out on the balcony just kind of he's like i didn't I, I got this dream home for her and then now it's me here alone it just feels wrong oh my god he's an emotional guy he wears hearing aids uh hearing and aids then it's pretty cool they parade out the women. And this is where it's oh, interesting. I gotta see the, now I got to see the women that check are in out, the show. Check out the women. They're all in their 20s. <laughs> oh, wait, are you serious? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wouldn't that be really funny, though? That would be <laughs> accurate uh, for what's portrayed in, in you know, in media. Uh, but no, luckily, they're all around like their mid to late 60s. Though also, and here's my one issue with the show. I find it very heartwarming. And I do love the message is trying to send it that you could have a second chance at love and all that in, you know, but here we go. I find it pretty tough to watch these old folks get their heart broken mm. on live tell on national television. Uh, you know what? I feel like when you're that old, your heart's like an old, Junk, you know, junk no, but box. The, yeah, you but know, that see, old that's, thing. That's they, the perception. They went through it all. That's the perception they're trying to break. And that when you get become an older person, you're still a person. Wait, what is the minimum? They have to be 60 years old. Yeah, there's one on there who's like 60, and all the other ones are like... <sighs> I think she got eliminated, though. The young one? Yeah, but there was one that's 64, and that's like the youngest one, I think. Wow, they do not... Okay, they found like the youngest looking... 60 plus year olds though. Jesus, take it easy over there. <laughs> oh, wow. Team. Look at their skin. Yeah, it looks pretty look good. Great. They look like they're, they're nice. They're yeah. nice folks. They're sweet. There's oh, it's there's some really sweet women. Steven's following all of them on Instagram right now. <laughs> follow, <laughs> follow, follow, yeah. follow, follow, follow. Nice, nice, nice. Whoa. Uh, I want to talk more about the show, but before we get into that, let's uh let's have a word from our sponsor, which for this episode is Z Biotics. Today's sponsor is Z Biotics Pre Alcohol Probiotic. Listen. Everybody's got a busy life these days. It seems like every day we're either on tour or traveling with the shows. And when we're at home, it's somebody's birthday, it's a wedding, it's a holiday, you name it. I don't know about you, but I'm not bouncing back the way I used to. It's not always possible to choose between an important social event or sometimes the equally important work that we have to do the next day. But now we don't have to choose. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic Drink is the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. 
It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. Here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct, not dehydration, that's to blame for your rough next day. Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. Just remember to make Zbiotics pre-alcohol your first drink of the night. Drink responsibly and you'll feel your best tomorrow morning. Thanksgiving is coming up sooner than you may think, so make sure to stock up on Zbiotics pre-alcohol probiotic before. You'll be thankful you did the next day. Go to zbiotics.com watcher to get your 15% off of your first order when you use watcher at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with 100% Money back guarantee, so if you're unsatisfied for any reason at all, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head over to zbiotics.com slash watcher and use the code watcher at checkout for 15% off. Thank you so much to Zbiotics for sponsoring this episode and our good times, baby. Back to uh, The Bachelor. The, the problem I have is it's just really tough because I would say 75% or higher of the female contestants are widowers like their husbands have died they're, widow, they're widowers <laughs> they're widows they're widows they're widows. oh yeah they're widows yeah uh widow what is the... widower not a word widower is a man it's a man oh, yeah. yeah widower is, why does a, it have to be... is a man i don't that's know weird. why they have to why have do they have different... to gender it that's so yeah. weird i'm that sure i'm sure weird. that's on the way out i'm sure the people don't use that yeah. anymore we'll all just be widows someday you know <laughs> i mean no i mean odds I, are i hope we go first oh i've told mari already i'm gonna die first yeah i might like trip down that? A set of was she like was she cool with that or was she like she I'm hates when you. i say that i think the ideal way though would be uh sort of a titanic situation <laughs> oh yes, we all yes, die at the same holding, yes. me and sarah holding hands in bed as the frozen waters of the Atlantic oh man <laughs> <creep up. laughs> i've i've had like this has been like a very recurring fear lately on the tour because shane and i when it's all said and done, we'll get out after the tour. We will have been on something like 60 to 70 flights over the course of two to three months. Yeah. And I was just thinking of the math of that. I was like, I don't think that many. Yeah. No. When, no, because transfers. Yeah, they're, I guess so. Huh? You yeah. think that's two separate planes per leg. Oh, per, yeah, you're right. So because the number without the transfers is 41. Interesting, man. 41 because so, you're going there and oh, oh so you're there going and back. around. And, and but then back. if you count the. Uh, the layovers, which right. we always have layovers, those will, you know, that puts it up to about 70 to 80. Damn. Plus all the ghost files, ones where you get COVID and you go there, come back and go there. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I was just doing the math and I was like, man, one of these, is, I wonder if one of these is going to crash. Nah. <laughs> well, this mean, actually happened recently at the airport because Mari was on, with us on one of the legs and there's just so many flights that I forgot to book one of Mari's connecting flights. And I was like, oh my God. And so Mari, we at the airport, I had to book her uh, another flight that was uh, separate from ours, but arrived at the same time. And we did that at the airport. And as we were on the plane, I had this horrible anxiety, just intrusive thought where I was like, oh, my God, what if Mari's plane goes down and it's all my fault because I forgot to book that connecting flight or vice versa if our flight goes down and she's spared because of my mistake? I it and I, for two hours on that flight, I was in just spin mode. I was fully spinning out. I could not get over the idea that my wife was going to be dead when I landed. <laughs> and when I, when I, yeah. I can't get over that. Well, because her flight also arrived seven minutes before ours, it, what a trick. allegedly. And when I landed, I texted her and I was like, hey, just landed, expecting her to get back to me because she would have already been on the ground and she did not respond within 10 to 15 minutes. And then I was really worried. You know, you can check her flight too. That's true. Yeah. That. Um, Funny word that they use leg for these a flights. A leg of the two a leg, a Yeah, that's pretty leg, funny. Right? Let's, let's unpack that. Um, <laughs> but one thing I before we oh, unpack okay. that, right. I think we should. I mean, I don't want to laugh at your anxiety at all because yeah. it's it's totally real. And like, um, my wife also has plane plane anxiety too. Yeah. Uh, but like, you can't control that. Like, you can't live like that where you're you're responsible for your wife's death because she booked a different flight. Like, this you is, would have been responsible. No. Yeah, yeah, I would. I know. I actually kind of would have. No, but this is also have. just the life of having an anxiety disorder. You kind of like live in these weird little spirals that happen throughout the day. You just yeah. kind of get used to. Them. It was pretty funny when we got to the airport and Mario was like, "Where's my ticket?" And you were like, "You, your reaction was sort of like that Mark when Mark Ruffalo like spoiled uh, Endgame in the 
interviews yeah. and he was like oh what because what, what? <laughs> you were like I, it was, I, I think it's in your email you know what's you know what's you know what's crazy too is like you know when you have that feeling of like i think i forgot something yeah and then you don't know what it is and then maybe hours later someone will say something like oh, i forgot my toothpaste and you're like oh toothpaste that's what i forgot yeah it was that as soon as Except she said for- my ticket <laughs> i knew immediately like oh shit i have fucked up in a very big way here so you you guys landed in the connecting airport and you realized she hadn't she didn't have the next flight no i it was the first flight like so like because these are all one-way trips like so you go to minnesota oh, and then okay, you go gotcha. from minnesota to I chicago see. i had forgotten one of the one-way trips oh, anyways back to the golden bachelor though it's just it's because they're all widows and they've already experienced the worst <laughs> amount of heartbreak. Yeah. To have to kind of watch them get rejected on live. You know, I mean, they're choosing town. to be there. Yeah. It's still sad, though, because they're... Well, they signed up for it, so often, I, laugh, I laugh and laugh and laugh. You're, 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 <laughs> you're, no, you're an evil man. They're, they're, uh, they, they know what they're signing up for. But they often... Give these s- women some agency, Ryan. Yeah, but they'll say things like to him, like, you know, I really didn't think I was able to fall in love again, and... And you've now woken me up to that to that possibility. And yeah, this but is, also, and then he's like, how, need, how much are you buying like, into this? They meet this guy for two days. That's the weird thing on those shows. I don't like, buy that. I think I'm falling for you. No, but I don't. <laughs> I don't. Like, I don't buy that for the younger bachelors, but for the older ones, because they're often they're like, I haven't gone on a date since my husband died. And so, if you're going on your first date in like 20 years, yeah. And then you start to feel things, and then they'll be like, "I'm really starting to feel this connection." And he goes, "Yes." And then he like Is starts he... to k- smooch him. Yeah, they've and been kissing they cut, on that. And show. then they cut to a scene of him with someone else. They've been kissing and on that show. Yeah, they're and kissing And then he's smooching each other. someone else, and it just kind of like it's just throwing me off. This uh, actually are, are the smooches good? What is that? Oh, well, are, are, are they? You know, because they're experienced smoochers. Or, you know, they're Steven's gonna watch this show at 0.5 speed so he could watch the <laughs> smooching smooch scenes. From these uh, golden. Learn how to sm- <laughs> learn how to smooch from these golden Bettys. Uh, the um, the it's a touching show. I wonder if this uh is in line with the sort of thing you hear about retirement homes and their issues. Oh, there's a lot of STDs yes, running through those bad STD boys because they're going to uh, Bangtown. They go to to Boing Boing City with each other. No, 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 don't mix that up because a, a Sheboing Boing is a name for a hot dog. <laughs> Over the weekend, I sent, I sent, a, I was at home. Mari and I had perhaps taken an edible. We were watching something, and my. I can't recall who sent me the meme. I think it was my brother. And it was a guy <laughs> who ha- he took a picture of a hot dog. You texted this to me at 1 a.m. I was brushing my teeth and I almost spit. Dude, toothpaste. I my brother sent me this meme and it's a picture of a guy holding a hot dog bun. But inside the bun are two hot dogs and the caption. And I was reading this while I was like uh, laying in bed. One o'clock in the morning, Mari's sleeping next to me, and I and I did that thing where something made me laugh so hard, and I, I couldn't laugh, so I tried to silently laugh, and the whole bed was just convulsing, because I was crying laughing, trying to stifle this laughter. It was a picture of a hot dog bun with two hot dogs in it, and it said something... <laughs> I think like, damn, dude. It was like about to go to Glizzy Town. No, it was, it was like about to go to Glizzy Town, but seeing a double barrel Sheboing Boing with no condiments is crazy. <laughs> there it is. Double barrel Sheboing Boings with no condiments is insane. <laughs> double barrel Sheboing Double barrel Sheboing Boings. I love that. I'm going to start saying that all the time because I know Glizzy is like the typical kind of nomenclature for hot dogs. I, I feel like, um, like, ooh, let me get one of those Sheboing Boings. That's like referring to hot dogs as that is is on the same par as, to me let as me get a honk that sweet, honk bobo. That sweet bobo. Honk that sweet bobo. If you didn't realize that's uh, when you refer to getting a, a puff, a, a little puff rooney of a joint. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't so know like that. if I'm like, I gotta get a shaboing boing and let me get a honk in that sweet bobo before <laughs> this because I want to be nice and primed for my double barrel shaboing boing. I've never done a, du- a double barrel shaboing boing, but I don't think I don't think there's any need I've for it. Never had the idea to do that. It's neither have I because it feels crazy. But I it think, sounds awesome now but that it, I'm thinking structurally. About it. I don't think it makes sense to do. Well, structurally, it actually might make more sense no. because you could no, put condiments in between the two. Bu- uh, the two hot dogs. I don't think. I don't. And think, also, no. I, I kind of so. think no. a triple barrel. Now, triple barrel is a bit. No, much. no. Think, think about it. If the if the hot dog bun is like this, 
Here's the a, thing: a I, double barrel is only going to be like one and two, but then you could do one, two, three. But I think a good hot dog bun is actually pretty small. Um, I don't want a big. When people have like those those rolls, you know, like a, I don't want that. Look, I don't want a nice. You already know this about me, bun. but I I fucking love hot dogs. Yeah, me too. They're one of my favorite foods on earth. I they really for, bring me joy. For a while in my youth, my my employment really was focused on places where i could eat free hot dogs get some shaboing boings for free my first job was at a soccer park where we made hot dogs all day and ate hot dogs all day and then in the summers i worked at a ballpark where i also ate hot dogs all day and gained like 10 pounds <laughs> no way you summer. were driven by eating hot dogs i mean was that part of your application process i uh, it was it wasn't like on the surface i needed a job and a bunch of kids from our high school worked there so it was fun but uh I ate a lot of hot dogs. And I would, at the end of the night, they'd be like, we've got 80 hot dogs left over. And I'd be like, I'll take 20. I would bring them home. What are your top, my neighbors. top three places to eat a hot dog? Like for me, I would like say a, like it's ballpark probably or... ballparks number one. Or outside of a, number a game. Two, num- yeah, ballparks number one. Number two is probably on the beach. <laughs> okay. Because I fucking love. You ever had grilled a hot dog on the beach? Yeah, I've done that. Okay, where's your third place? Eating anything on a beach, though, is pretty good. I think my third place would probably be uh, by a pool. A little poolside shaboing boing. Yeah, that's nice. (laughs) It's incredible. I fucking love hot dogs. I'll eat hot dogs anywhere. Oh, okay. Uh, Well, (laughs) before we we keep talking about shaboing boings, let's take another break. Sorry to interrupt the hot dog talk, but today is also sponsored by Miracle Brand Sheets. While we do want those dogs hot, we want our sheets cool. And I recently found a way to stay at the perfect temperature all night long using silver infused bed sheets by Miracle Made that were inspired by NASA. Miracle Made offers a whole line of self cleaning, eco friendly bedding such as sheets, pillowcases, and comforters that prevent 99% of bacteria and require three times less laundry. Using silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA, Miracle Made sheets are thermal regulating and designed to keep you at the perfect temperature all night long so you get better sleep every night. And these sheets are infused with silver that prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them to stay cleaner and fresh three times longer than other sheets. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the high price tag of other luxury brands and feel as nice, if not nicer, than sheets used by some five-star hotels. Miracle sheets also make a great gift. Nothing better than the gift of a great night's sleep, right? Go to trymiracle.com slash watcher to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Save over 40%. And if you use our promo code WATCHER at checkout, you'll get three free towels and save an extra 20% off. Miracle is so confident in their product that it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you'll get a full refund. Again, that's trymiracle.com slash watcher to treat yourself, a friend, or a loved one this holiday season. Welcome back. Hi. Let's let's get back more into these hot dogs, these shaboing boings. I think, you know who also loves uh, hot dogs quite a bit is Jay Z. Okay. Beyonce told this story about how Jay Z is obsessed with hot dogs and sometimes he eats like four a day. Or I could eat like four that. hot dogs easy. Oh, easy, but he does it like after award shows. I like that. I think that's, that's a really nice little treat. Mm-hmm. I'm God. I can't think of the last time I had hot dogs at home. They're such a. I don't think of it. I mean, like ever. But you also mentioned there's a hot dog place that you've been going to recently. Yeah, there's a place in Los Feliz called Special Hot Dog, and actually, I think they might have temporarily stopped for family issues or something but yeah it's a great little pop-up shout what, out to special hot dog what's the, what's the hot dog say honestly it's more like a sausage they make mm, i don't they know make, about that mm. yeah it's if you want a full hot dog experience it's kind of a different vibe um but you know if i want a hot dog i'm going to uh portillo's or I'm trying to think where else in la has hot dogs i mean honestly the best mm. hot dog you'd get in la is at the market just grill it yourself it's fucking amazing at the market at the supermarket i don't i don't discriminate when it comes to hot dogs too i i, I love turkey dogs pork beef vegan. yeah they're all good i love hot dogs i don't dogs. like the vegan ones those are weird but uh, you know i don't mind what it. are they made out of carrots or something the actual act of it is i don't know what they're made of carrots <laughs> they probably a tempa or some shit like that tempa i have no idea or is it tempeh is that how you pronounce it i don't know you know like the chicken like the fake chicken okay Vegans are screaming at us right now. I love uh, Nathan's, you know. Dude, Nathan's, nice Nathan's. I love a Vienna beef. 
Yeah. The snap of the good. skin. That's what it's all about. The snap. Do you get crazy with them sometimes? You could do like that chicken apples, like sausage and like mm. fucking like jalapeno dog. No, 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 all that no, stuff. no, 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 no. I, I don't really like stuff. You don't like the you haka. don't like brats. I don't like the call coming oh, from inside the house. There's there's a there's a spot on um fuck. Where is I think it's on La Brea. You're not talking about pinks, are you? No, I'm talking about Verst House. Though it's spelled Vert's House, so I think maybe they were trying to say Verst mm. House and they just didn't name the company correctly. Um, but they have uh, great, great sausages, great sausages. Yeah. Uh, they've got some good schnitzel. Sarah and I go there all the time. I love Anytime hot dogs. we're over in that area, uh, we, we pop over there. Hot dogs are probably the food I love the most that I eat the least amount of. I agree with that Like about myself. I, mm. I don't think I have them as much as I would want to, which is probably for the best. Like, I love cheeseburgers, but I eat cheeseburgers all the time. Same thing with, whoa. Yo, Even the mention of a cheeseburger <laughs> got wow. shit excited. I could, there go, was a, I could um, go for a cheeseburger today. There was a, where did we go? Were we in New York? We were shooting a Ghost Files, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody went out for... Pizza? No, it was like... um. Like a Benihana type place. Oh yes, that was. And um, remember, I was like, "I'm gonna go across the street and eat a hot dog." Yeah, I remember Bye. that. <laughs> there was a. It was we're shooting Ghost Files. We were driving from location to location. I think this was when we were in Buffalo. It was in Buffalo, yeah. And our crew, which is about eight people, we all sat down to eat at this Benihana place for lunch before we went to the airport. And Shane left the table and was like, "I'm gonna go get a hot dog." <laughs> Well, the hot dog place across the street looked really good. And, and he just ate his hot dog alone alone, <laughs> and came back and rejoined the crew. It was like slightly misty out. It was raining a little bit. I was just sitting outside under an umbrella watching it like it was on a highway. Yeah. It's <laughs> just eating a hot dog by my lonesome. Dude, that uh, that Benihana place was amazing. I couldn't do that at that hour. Oh, it God. just wasn't my jam. That guy was crazy, too. He came around with, you know, like the little squirt bottles they have for when they put oil on, like, the grill? Yeah. He had filled one up with, like, soju or something, and he came over and squirted that into Carter and I's mouth. Nice. And I was wow. like, this feels excessive for 1 p.m. Yeah. Uh, I did not sign up for this. I love Benihana. We could talk about that in a separate episode. Good. Because uh, that'll be a whole episode unto itself. We never did the uh, company-wide Benihana uh dinner we should do that at some point it, it oh, fuck i would love that yeah mari and i go to benihana to celebrate career miles, milestones Is kind that, of that's the spot you guys go to we thought it would be funny we did it first as like an ironic joke and then we realized we both just love benihana <laughs> so we're like you know fuck it i love the ones where they bring it to your house where they bring it to your house yeah they uh there's like the they bring the grill and everything and you know they do it in your backyard i've never done that i've always i've always wanted it's to. amazing you should do it for your birthday you should do it for your birthday. I think for my birthday, I'm going to go to the... I told you I saw Bob Saget there once, right? Not recently, I imagine, because that no. would mean that I'm right about ghosts. Yeah. By the way, I... I think you made the same joke last time you said this, too. In the um, Boston episode of Food Files, Yeah, I laughed real hard watching the cutback. I laughed as hard as I did in the moment when that woman was like, JFK used to go here. It was his favorite restaurant in Boston. And then... <laughs> I think you just say something like, he doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> really got me. That's uh Food Files has has been a fun little watch. Adam Adam Bianchi is, a, is a, a a little genius. I love it's a good it. Show. That's Mari's favorite show that we make. It's her favorite show? Yeah. She said this is the her favorite show we've ever made. Wow. She thinks there's just something like kind of like she said she said there is a quote je ne sais quoi to Adam Bianchi's producing quality. She's right. Well, that I mean she's just a fan of Adam Bianchi. Adam, I think Adam she's Adam just, just a fan of Adam Bianchi. Yeah, that's she's like, there's something about that show that's really good. I don't know. It must be the person who made it. Yeah. <laughs> really talented. <laughs> He's very good at what he does. Uh my favorite show that you guys make is one made by somebody, somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a point. Something She's that you guys have nothing to do She's with. A, yeah, we just show up. Uh, anyways, uh, let's move on to Shane's topic of what the fuck did coffee. you Coffee. Oh, oh coffee. coffee. I got some coffee. <laughs> yeah, and guess guess where it's from. I asked Shane this where it's from this morning. This is the second time you've done... <laughs> one of the topics in the first episode, <laughs> Shane juice. was juice, and then Shane went juice. Because he was drinking I got some juice. juice. I bought some coffee from Lazy Acres. Oh, you went back. Uh... It's no good. <laughs> It's no good. What? Why? What is this abusive relationship that you started 
<laughs> with this supermarket. If people have listened to the third episode of this pod, they'll remember Shane talking about just chronicling his well, his issues and triumphs the, with this one you, local supermarket. You wanted to grab some cherry tomatoes. They didn't have them. But then you kept going back. Shane and I did a tour date on uh, a couple days ago. Uh, we were in Texas, and in the green room, they gave us a veggie platter. Yeah. And inside the veggie platter were cherry tomatoes. And Shane oh. made a point of looking at me and going, they got cherry tomatoes, and he ate the cherry tomato. So it's something that's on your mind. This this supermarket has a hold on you. Yeah, well, it's um even last <laughs> even last night we were driving past it. Sarah and I went out to dinner. I was driving past it. Yeah, and I said lazy acres. <laughs> pointed it out. Throw a brick through the window or something. Well, I don't know because I go there. I shop the there. Note taped to it. Get cherry tomatoes. But this coffee I bought there is really bad. It's it's interesting well, why it's is not, it bad? It's not even though. like you're forced. It's like. I've been in towns before. I live in towns where a, you're forced to go to the grocery store. There's only two flavor. stores out there. Yeah, there's we're in L. A. There's you yeah, probably pass a bevy of options stores on the way. To <laughs> I mean, I pass a Gelson's, brother, and you yet know? you go to Lazy Acres. Well, Gelson's is too expensive. Is Lazy Acres like very like? I haven't affordable? bought enough there to really clock what their prices. <laughs> Why are you going back to this place over and over again? I don't know. I'm very intrigued by it. You know, it's got a welcoming atmosphere. I got to go to this place. This is why I asked you what you like about shows, because I, I can't wrap my head around like what you like, what you're drawn to, and even with this, like I don't, the, I don't even know either. I think debacle, like. I, th I like when a uh, a TV show draws me in in ways that I can't even pinpoint. You know? And and that's what Lazy Acres it feels like is doing. I think to you maybe right now. they've they've done a lot in terms of their aesthetic. You know, it's a nice vibe in there. It's like one of the nicer Whole Foods. You know, you've been to some Whole Foods where you're like, they, yeah, they're not trying anymore. They're not trying. Yeah, this one is. Uh, there's really a nice vibe in there. They do, they still don't have cherry tomatoes. And or, by the way, those good coffee. I'll tell you what, those cherry tomatoes in Texas, really bad. <laughs> They, they didn't taste like They're anything. They're from a veggie they platter no from like Albertsons <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, but you know, the carrots tasted like carrots. The tomatoes didn't taste like anything. Actually, when I was eating oh, the so tomatoes- the carrots tasted like shit? When I was eating the- You don't like carrots, right? I hate the consistency. It's very- it's, It makes my tongue feel funny. Do you uh, ever- raw, um, Do you ever raw. like- Do you ever like peel a big one and then eat it like a Bugs Bunny? Peel a big one? Peel a big one. You ever peel a big one? No. Uh, I don't. I don't like carrots in general. Uh, the, the the Bugs Bunny thing I do. I do that with pickles. He doesn't do. The, he doesn't eat those. I know, but it makes a similar <laughs> crunch noise, and I can pretend that it's a carrot. Well, is, at that point, you're pretending to be the Vlasic Stork, not not Bugs Bunny. The what? Oh, the oh yeah, that. Just a better pickle. Is, does Kosher Dill have like a a, a a mascot? I think like a little frog. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, he's the pickle frog. It's not pickle Rick. <laughs> you know, for all our Rick and Morty heads out there. There's a, there's a Pickle Rick uh, skin on Fortnite right now. Hey, are you playing as it? Hey, wait, is no. he tiny, though? No, I think he's big. Because that would give you, like, an, an unfair advantage. You know when you would play, like, Goldeneye and you'd be Odd Job? Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. Tomorrow. Yeah. Well, by the time this comes out. This isn't exciting, but the Michael Myers uh, skin comes out on Fortnite. That is pretty cool. That might be the thing. I can't that, wait to make him dance. That you, might be the thing that makes me Are you me buying the skins? You're, yes, you're, you're uh, dropping for, cash. for my wedding, uh, one of my dear friends, Brian, uh, gave Sarah and I each $70 worth of V-Bucks. You know what? That's a really good wedding gift. <laughs> it was really I, good. Because now we're like, oh, we can buy so much on Fortnite. Because he's on our he he's on our. Fortnite. You know, Brian's fucked you for life now, though, because he's given you a taste of having those bucks and getting these skins. I and mean, once you run out of that money, you're going to be like buying skins left No, right. I'll go back to what I was doing before, which was spending my own money on skins. <laughs> <laughs> it's a free game. It pays for itself. Does it? Yeah. When you say it pays it's, for itself, doesn't that mean it uh, gives you some sort of profit? That here's the thing: I'm buying a skin once every three to five weeks. Yeah. Whoa, Did, that's actually pretty frequent. Could you explain what a skin I, is spent, for people who might not know what that is? It's, you know what you look like in the game. You know, so if I want to be Ripley from Aliens, or if I want to be a it's Xenomorph like a, from like Aliens, a, a costume. If one could say that is like it's like a costume. So the yes. Myers one, what does that look like? It looks like Michael Myers from, <laughs> from Halloween. <laughs> but the best part is you can then buy also emotes. So my Mikey Myers is going to be doing you know Gangnam style and yeah, doing that's, cool. oh. that's awesome. The Macarena. 
Uh, I, Mikey know, I don't have good. the Macarena, but I'd like to get it someday. That's so good. We'll see when it shows up on the shop. Going back to what Steven said about Shane, one thing I've learned about him is he his balking points are impossible to figure. Didn't we talk figure. about this last week? We did, but, but it's it comes up a lot in the sense of like, like sometimes Shane will be watching a series and he'll be like, oh, I just stopped watching that. And I'm like, oh, what happened? And you was just like... <laughs> it's but, really just like if it's keeping my interest. And uh, a lot of times I'm like, this ain't worth my time. Mm. And then that is one end of the spectrum. And then there's because the- I watch a lot of television. And the only reason I'm able to do that is because I'm easy to just cut mm. out, just give up on something. But very- then there's your other end of the spectrum, which is this lazy acres thing where you could go. They could have shitty produce, have mm-hmm. shitty coffee. Well, and no, I didn't like, say that. Shitty- I think we're going to keep going here for some reason. Here's the thing. I did buy a good coffee from them and now I bought a bad <laughs> coffee from them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm not, I don't know where I fall on that. And that's what I'm saying. You're like that's a why, wild card. It's, it's impossible. I'm deep. probing. Also, I'm probing. I'm gathering also, data. The story of you not eating with the group at Benihana is so you. Like, it is uniquely everybody shame. else was eating. I'm guessing. With yes, you guys. it's uniquely. Yeah. Shame. You were like, you know what? I'm out. I'm just gonna go across the street and eat a hot dog. I really like, wanted a hot dog. People or the, don't normally do that. Or the famous. <laughs> or the famous. Call of Duty story, which yeah. actually our pop producer Matt was here for. Shane just disappears out of the game, <laughs> doesn't text anybody back, and then the next day I was like, "Hey, your internet fallout," and he was like, "No, I just didn't want to play anymore." Yeah, it, it even stuff. goes. We were in London, and we were and Ryan was like, "Let's go see a play," and you're like, "Nah, I'm gonna go watch a movie." Instead. I just honestly, the <laughs> play didn't seem fun, no, which is fine. But like, <laughs> there's part of it is like, let's just hang out, you know? Yeah, he's like, like, no, but we weren't <laughs> hanging out because we were going to sit somewhere for three hours and not yeah, speak. But when you go and to I was a- like, well, if I'm not gonna hang out with you guys anyway, I'm gonna. That's you know that's a flawed point. Also, that was my favorite part of the trip. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> That's such a flawed piece of logic, no. too. You know there's something to go into a movie or to a play with, like, a, like, like let's say you go to a play with Sarah. You're not going to be like, well, we didn't hang out. You went to go experience yeah. something together or a concert for that I matter. I mean, in my defense, the play seemed lame. And my other, my, and I think my logic is sound on this. We were in London for work. We were doing a VidCon thing there. Yeah, yeah. And I've never been in London for work where I'm like relatively... Like we didn't, I wasn't on vacation. No. Yeah. You guys were seeing a play that I had no interest in. Sure. And I was like, I'm going to seize this opportunity of not feeling pressured to treat this like a vacation. Yeah. And I'm just going to walk around the city and listen to music in a way that I probably would feel like it would feel like a waste of time if I was on vacation. Um, but because we were there for work, I just got to sort of like vibe with the city for a bit it was slightly rainy i listened to music i walked around i didn't intend to go see a movie until i walked up on a movie theater and i was like i'm gonna go see a movie this rules i think what and it was incredible it was a great night i think the thing is if i went to see the play i would have hated every minute of it i think the thing what steven was saying though is that it's about like hanging out like so if you didn't want to see the play we could have went to go see something else or no you guys were crazy about going to see i told you guys i don't really want to see that i was ryan was the one who was like i was down to see a play but i've also i also would have been down to do something else as well yeah i mean i asked you guys if you wanted to but you were like no we want to see this play and i was like all right i I don't want to see that I honestly envy that you're able to free yourself from the chains of social norms and obligations. Cause Thank you. Yes, he, he definitely I have a hard time to the like, beat of his own group. <laughs> Sometimes we'll be on ghost file shoots too, and he'll just be like, oh, I'm just going to, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm not going to do that. Hey, let's take a quick break and then we'll, we'll come back. Okay. <laughs> Here we are. We're back. Yes, we are back. Uh, but yeah, we've gone. We sometimes we'll go on ghost files trips and we'll do things as like do things as a group. And then uh, oh, there was the one time we all were bowling, and I was like, nah, I don't want to. That bowl. was the weirdest <laughs> thing I have ever seen. I just so, it was. I, think I told that Mari that story, and she was like, "That is odd." Oh, so what? What happened? What happened? So we went. Uh, we were stuck in this one city. We weren't stuck. We were waiting for a layover that was no. Way we weren't late. waiting. We're, no, we. I was annoyed because we booked our airfare for like 5 p.m. Yeah, we were waiting for our plane. Yes. Yeah, we uh, it was a late flight. Uh, we had just shot the night before, and we had time to kill because our flight was super late. And the reason why it was late, by the way, is so that people could actually sleep after the shoot. Yes, but it was way beyond that. But it was like it was beyond like 5 p.m. That. It was like I was 5 like, p.m. Why the fuck this are actually, we staying? This actually has no bearing on the story either No, way. It, it does because I was like, I am not in the mood to bowl right now. <laughs> 
I was like, we're stuck in this fucking town. I know, but no. I want to be home. I can't imagine. Nobody was in the mood to bowl or to. No, you guys were like, let's all go bowling. No, we like, weren't. Oh, this is this is the revisionist part that I was talking about. So we all. Then why did we go? <laughs> you because, all wanted to bowl. Because it was either that or we just sit in a car for five hours. Yeah, like I guess. It, Because yeah. we had to check out at 12. They kicked yeah. us out of the hotel. Yeah. We had yeah. a flight at five. And we were like, well, what are we going to do? We could eat lunch. We have about five hours to kill before this flight. We can't stay in our hotel. And so we look up things to do in this town. And one of the only things they had, and one of the things that all the locals told us to do is like, you should go to the bowling alley. And we were like, I guess. And there were people that were like actually vocal, like mm, be nice to go home kind of thing. Uh, but we couldn't. So we all went to this bowling alley and uh, I, I bought a lane so that we could like play bowling and everyone proceeds to start bowling. Shane is with us. And he stands like, you know what? When there's a bowling alley, there's like the seats that are on like the ground and you bowl. And then there's like you go up a little set of stairs and then you could like kind of just sit like at like a bar area and watch yeah. people bowl. The entire crew bowls and Shane, instead of just being like, hey, I guess I'll bowl too, stands and watches us bowl for two hours. <laughs> no, I didn't do that. I I uh, I was drinking beer and I think I was. <laughs> you were. <laughs> I think I was uh, looking at stuff on my phone, and I had my laptop out. So I yeah. was, I was doing stuff. I wasn't. Wa I didn't pay attention to you guys bowling at all. I know, but like <laughs> the entire crew is literally like five to ten feet away from him bowling, and he's just like standing up there next to the nachos, and we're just like I was sitting. I wasn't standing watching you guys like Michael Myers. Yeah, but like okay, then the high seats, and then you're like, making this weirder than it was. Well, because Lizzie at one point was like, "You're not gonna bowl," and he was like, "No." And we were like, all right. I didn't want to bowl. <laughs> and so, but you see what I'm, this is kind of the same. Yeah. Like, no, no, it's, you, you have a certain freedom. I have a hard time not just doing things because I, I feel obligated to. But you don't have that in, in you almost. No, I just also Impressive. really don't like bowling. Yeah. I know, but that's the point. Like if someone else. But you else took him to Highland Park Bowl for the tourist trap. <laughs> Because we needed to shoot a video. Well, the thing is, but like, even if you don't like bowling, like, I don't particularly like bowling either. But it's just like, well, we're here. The group is here. We might as well just do it. Like, but like, I am not as strong on my convictions of like things that if I don't like it, I'm just not going to do it. Which actually, though, I will say recently, I think I'm done with golf. I, I just. What? Damn. Dude. I'm about to get into it. Dude, no, it's, Ryan. It's too no, much. Perfect man. time to get out, Ryan. No, the, the, you will see this. I'm. This is get like in. me actually. Because like you, you were have, saying, and you have all your brother plays. He can teach you. I know, you. And, but he's re his brother's really good though. So no, my probably... brother's incredible. He's actually almost a scratch golfer. Um, what is that? Which means he could like go on any golf course and hit par, like Whoa. across the board. Wow! Like he's like, I actually think if he would have put more energy into it, because he really didn't give a shit. He was just naturally talented. If he actually like, trained, I'm calling him out right now, I think he could have been a, a professional golfer. I really do think that. Damn. That's actually wild that you think that. He has the most of my all my friends think that. He has that the personality too. of a golfer. No, he's he doesn't. Got, sometimes he has like those dead. Would eyes, he? You know? Would you think he'd yeah, teach me how to golf? Oh well, yeah. Well, that's the thing about when you're naturally talented, though. You're, oh, when you can't teach, you that. can't teach because he's well. He's like, uh, when I ask him all the time, like, you help me with my swing. What do you do with your swing? And I'm like, he's just like, I don't know. I just fucking hit it, dude. I know yeah. a guy just like that. It's frustrating. Who, who did the same thing when I asked him how to light a set? And uh, he was like, I don't know, you just light it yourself. She has a three point di diagram. And you get no, but away this from is me. this is a good way to bring everything to a head here, in the sense of like, I have being around Shane, I have picked up that I just am starting to learn that quality. Where like, if you don't want to do something, you don't have to do it. Like so, like for instance, all of my friends golf, my family golfs, Jake golfs. You're starting to golf, and like we're getting to the age where people are like, you should get into golf. It's good for business. It's sure. fun. You you get out in nature. Yuck. And so I've tried it 10 times now. Mm -hmm. And the first six times were great. I was really liking it. It was fun. I get to hang out in nature and, you know, get out on a Sunday morning. And as I started to, like, get a little more into it and try, like, oh, maybe I could actually be decent at this. I just don't – I'm not able to get over that hump. So now that I'm at the point where, like – Everyone is, every one of my friends are super into it and they're just like, you know, they're taking lessons. They're like going for it. And I'm kind of like, look, this shit is like kind of frustrating. And I get like really upset on the course when I'm just not like that good at something. And like, mm -hmm. I don't have the time to put in to get better at it. 
and it's just bringing me more stress and mm. uh that's how i feel about and, bowling and anger then is worth my time in that moment like i don't want to we don't we don't have any days off so like i don't want to spend one of my days off playing a like a round of like whack fuck can you understand if that's how i feel about bowling well that's the point i'm getting i don't to. find it fun that's the point I'm, well the point i'm getting to is like because i had told my friends this recently like hey i think i'm done golfing they're like dude you can't do that kind of similar reaction to yours and that and in the past, I would have been like, mm, "You're probably right. I don't think I'm going to do that." I haven't even gotten into golfing yet, though. I was waiting. You were you were the one telling me I know. to get into and it. And now I'm just like, now I hear that, and I'm just kind of like, you know what? No. And then they'll be like, "Why?" And then I my re- reason is I don't like it. Yeah. And then it's kind of like hard for them to accept that. But I've watched him do it, so I'm just like, you know what? I could do. I could just not do something because I don't want to do it. You so, gotta. You gotta feel good about bailing on stuff in this i life. don't know about bailing. See, that's what i like bailing i don't know that i agree with that like if i'm there i mean interest wise or or yeah or yeah yeah but if i'm like if i'm there i'm gonna do it or if like we're in a group setting where we're like we can't go anywhere else i'm like all right let's make the best of the situation that we're mm. in is my mindset but if i have the opportunity to like control the situation before i even get there that's when i'm gonna start putting my foot down and be like I don't want to go golfing. I'm not going to do it. It doesn't, it's, it pisses me off. It makes me yeah. a very frustrated person in the morning. And I don't like mornings to begin with. I'm not a That's morning fair. person. I'm a, I've tried to change myself into one, but I can't. I used to be somebody who was very regimented in only doing things I wanted to do. And I think I've actually flipped because I was a picky eater. Mm, I see. I was somebody who didn't want to do stuff. And then, then people are like, oh, you should try skiing. You should try these things. These are super fun. And as I've like gotten older, I've, I've just become more of a, what do they call it? You know, a punch, not a punching bag, a rag doll. Doormat. Doormat, yeah. But I think actually that social pressure, weirdly for me, has made me a better human being. So I don't know. Interesting. Interesting what he's saying I think there's a balance to it. I was the kind of person that would say yes to everything. uh, And now I'm kind of just like, as I'm getting older, I figure it's more like controlling your or conserving your energy. I think Shane conserves his energy better than anybody. I think I'm pretty enthusiastic about most things in this life, but I've also picked things that I choose not to participate in. Under any circumstance. Yeah, like you're not going to catch me bowling anytime. That is clear. Uh, That that was like when I, 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 that's when I was like, this dude is built different. Like there are eight people bowling and he's one of the eight and he's like, nah. (laughs) <laughs> i'm just gonna pull out my phone instead and i was like that i in a million years i could never see myself doing that but i don't have that there's will. probably conditions where i would be like you know what i'll bowl but when it was it was very circumstantial to the fact that i was already annoyed that we were trapped in this like City. desolate place yes for, and we had to check out of our hotel at noon and our flight was until like 5 or 6 p.m and i was like i am not in the mood to do anything right now. what's crazy is the alternative too was like sit in the car like they're really Uh, we we can't undersell how much how little there was to do in this place and that's why i don't want to name the place (laughs) but before we move on before we move on to our last bit of business here and by business i mean uh steven's topic let's have another word from our sponsors and we're back and we are back it's time to talk about birthdays i'm always excited for steven's topics they always paint such a rich tapestry well here's the thing i think about my topic all week long oh I'm mulling over it. I take this podcast very seriously. Good. That's good. No, yeah. And like, by the way, we discussed how like there was a world where I wasn't going to make this episode because I was in Miami partying it up last night. <laughs> I got in at 1 a.m. this morning and I actually had today off. I Today was marked out of office for me. But he's here. But I'm here because I care about the pod. You care about pod, pod watcher. watcher. Pod watcher. And I chose birthdays because my birthday, when this comes out, will be in four days, November 10th. Um, oh, that's right. I have a lot to say about that. First of all, um, this is just, I want to I wanna rant a little bit. Oh, boy, oh shit. Oh, boy. Um, it's not even a rant. Fam- you know Famous Birthdays? You know that website? They oh, like track God. everybody's I'm birthdays. I'm so excited for what's about yeah, to what are they No, doing? no. Like, so they kept emailing me the last like 10 years. Like, when's your birthday? When's your birthday? And actually, I was like, screw you guys. Go away. I don't want my birthday publicized because it's public. You know, it's you know sensitive information. 
I thought the same thing. My, I thought that. My mom had grilled me for years about, like, make sure no one knows your birthday. It's what? Too, too yeah, s- it might be an Asian thing. Then. I think I don't it is know. an Asian thing, but perhaps. Either way, um, they put the wrong birthday on there. So I think, it, like, for a long time, it was November 12th on Famous Birthdays. But then, because of that, I keep getting birthday wishes on the wrong day. That's, well, which is kind of, you'll have to email. Do you think they do that on purpose so that you'll reach out? <sighs> I think so. Look it up right now. Well, and, and it's, it's really a bummer to get on the wrong day it's like you know it's like recognized for the wrong award or something i, I don't know it's, it was it's weird so i need to fix that on, on famous birthday it's november 10th i'm setting the record straight right now i was born on november 10th 1990 i'm looking it up right now at 3 33 a.m oh you know the time no, it, it's it's changed it's november 10th now. oh it's correct now it's on it's correct somebody fixed it look at this funny little photo of you you look nice um so, look this, nice. so there's that uh the, the thing i wanted to talk about though is i wanted to ask you guys do you guys, are you a birthday lover or hater for your own birthday? I I personally love uh, my birthday coming around, not because of the celebration of the birthday. Actually, that's actually my least favorite part. Mm. But I love that it's a, an excuse to plan something to get all of my friends and family together. See, that right there is something that I don't have in me. And it's probably probably why I've, I've hated wedding planning. <laughs> yeah um i don't like people celebrating me around me well, i don't want people to gather for me when i would that's and that's actually the why it's a interesting thing for me because last year for instance i threw a big house party for my birthday and i was like this is gonna be cool i'll have a bunch of people all of my friends and stuff will be here and my family and we could all be in the same spot mm-hmm. and when it came to the part of there being a birthday cake i always feel like i recoil into my skin because then i'm reminded Oh yeah, that's why everyone's here. It's because yeah. of my f- stupid ass birthday. I don't like that part. I wish I could just have the birthday party without them even celebrating me at all. I would love that. I love other people's birthdays because it's not about me. When I um, what are you pulling up there? Uh, I'm pulling up a picture of the famous birthdays booth at VidCon. That always made me laugh. It just looks really. <laughs> yeah, good. It looks like it's Barbie coated. Is too. that like a legit company? Like, it must are they be. making money? I'm not sure. I guess ads or something. I don't something. know what they do. Here's where I'm at with why I hate my birthday. Mm-hmm. And it's because I think I think it's because I'm a middle child. And I think it's because there was one year that my parents forgot my birthday. And oh, ever damn. since then, I was too traumatized by people not remembering my birthday that I was like, okay, I'm. you know what? Screw it. Uh, even I'm not going to oh, yeah. care about my birthday. Who cares about it? It's not gotta, important. You you protect talk, myself. Talk to someone about that. I have. And I've oh. been in a lot of therapy. <laughs> okay. Well. <yeah. laughs> but I'm trying to figure out how to love my birthday more. So if you guys have tips on If you have tips on that, and the, you know, leave them in the comments. Uh, I'm curious because it is very hard. Like, it is a mental block for me. Yeah. To, tr- to like, love my birthday. And I want that. Though. I, I want to. you need to. If you, my no, I want it. My approach has been uh, to treat each year kind of as a toss up. Some years I've had parties where I invite like 50 people. Yeah. yeah. Other years I've had parties where I invite like eight people. Yeah. And then other years, like this past year, we were kind of busy in May. Sarah, like Sarah and I will always go out to dinner for a nice birthday situation. And then I'll be like, oh, yeah, I should plan something with everybody. And this this month uh, earlier this year, we were busy and I was like, I'll do it toward the end of the month. And then the end of the month came up and I was like, never mind. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, there's been especially the past few years with like the pandemic. Half the time I'm like, I don't, I don't need to do anything. I'm yeah. Good. Uh, yeah. You know, those people who like will have like five birthdays. Like, like they have birthday week. The people yeah. who are really into their own birthdays, it's a little weird to me. Yeah. I, I generally don't like the attention. <laughs> no, especially when they're like into like the, you know, the whole thing where you could use uh, the fuck you, it's my birthday kind of thing to get people to do things. Yeah. Yes, yes. Insufferable, insufferable stuff there. But even just like, I think it also goes to this idea of celebrations. Like, I just don't celebrate my life enough. Like, so. <laughs> Like, I, I, I honestly, yeah. like, I, I'm not going out, like, w- you know, anniversaries for, you know, whatever. You holidays. don't go out for anniversaries right now? We, I guess we do. I mean, there was one year, I like, I didn't really do Valentine's Day very well. And I don't know. It, it's like, it doesn't, like, emotional, like, 
events celebrating my own life don't like move me to plan something, but I want that. I want to care. I'll just go out to dinner. I, I go hard on other people's birthdays. I will say that. I like celebrating. Like, for instance, Mari's birthday was this past weekend, and I helped organize, like, a, a slumber party. Like, mm. so, like, not a slumber party, but a slumber party thing. Like, it was Mari and her friends, and they came over in, like, pajamas, and we watched a movie, and then I had i took the popcorn machine from watcher and i made popcorn for everybody and then candy you should keep that at home by the way just keep it at home you took the whole popcorn machine i I, guess we've only used it here once we've never used it in this new office i mean i i'm i'll keep it there until we want to bring it back because i i'm not not gonna lie i like it in the kitchen it's pretty sweet yeah take. but i i was there popping i I made an enormous batch of popcorn for like 12 people that's a tough machine to make a big batch in i had to really work it yeah i had to sit there and work it. that was part of the issue why we haven't used it at the office much because i couldn't get my head around you know what was weird though it was kind of nice in the same way that i and this is kind of goes back to when i don't like the attention on me when it comes to my birthday like i've had several birthdays now where i either am the bartender for everybody have a role or I am the person working the grill. Job. Yeah. And for this particular case, I was the person working the popcorn You're machine. Popcorn man. And I was just sitting there working it like a grill. Like, you know, just people would come by, chat yeah. for a little bit, leave. Because I also don't like chatting too much. Yeah. So I like just what? being What? That's kind of, insane. That's, that can't be true. That does not scan. It depends. It depends. It, you could chat to yourself. I was going to say, I was saying the other week, if you, if you divvy up, and I want someone to crunch the numbers on these podcast episodes, yeah. I think... 80% of them are you talking. <laughs> probably the other 20%, Stephen and I, somewhere in there. That's probably true. That's really yeah. funny. Yeah. Uh, there's something about uh, sitting in this little room. Gets me real <laughs> chatty. Uh, but as Ryan wondering... saying, I don't love chatting. That's yeah. It depends. It depends what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, That's fair. But at like a party, I could either be like really chatty or I could be like, I kind of want to be a bartender and then chat to nobody and just yeah. make drinks for everybody all night that sounds nice which is nice uh but i do like you know going hard for other people's birthdays can i say one more thing about this yes um and this is not even birthdays but just like in general when people say thank you to me i realized this over the weekend i was somebody was like oh thank you for doing that and i and i like instinctively i said no thank you no, you have and, to, and, and it like made zero sense. Yeah. I was like, "Wow, that was." Uh, n- uh, n- I had to just receive the thanks, but you I gotta, have a hard time you receiving. Gotta, you got to rewire that, and you got to change it, it to. Is. You're very welcome. I see. You're very welcome. You're well, that's, very welcome. Now that very seems welcome. passive aggressive. Like, like you know, you're almost well, like you didn't even a... appreciate the thank you. No, you're well. If you're saying you are very welcome, that means you appreciated it, the thank you quite a bit without saying like appreciate the thanks. <laughs> then they're appreciating the I, I've been, I've the been saying something l- lately is this is this okay I've been saying I, thank you I received that like like that's, a that's like a, weird, a that's, that's, weird, that's like yeah. no it's yeah. like a certain certain yeah. like um I have received like you're you. like no well they say they'll say like oh like Steven you're like a really good friend or something like, like that and thank you I have received that if re- you said thank you I received <laughs> that I think my transmitted phone- my phone would auto trigger. Siri would be like, "Are you okay?" <laughs> okay, maybe I should stop saying that. It's because it's really hard for me to receive those kinds of words. If I said thank you to somebody and they said thank you, I've received that, I would run because <laughs> I would think the next thing that's about to happen is I'm going to get murdered. It's the Terminator. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> He's just, okay, maybe, is that not? Do people say that? Matt, back me up here. No one says. No one says. No one says. I received that. that. Like, no one responds I like they're responding that. to a business email. Okay, uh, help me out. I pre- okay, it's the same thing. That I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Stephen, because this is actually probably a similar vein. How do you do with compliments? No, that's what I'm saying. I I can't. Re- I I'm now, like, I'm terrible at receiving compliments too. It's like kryptonite to me, which is also consequently why I don't like people celebrating me on my birthday. Yeah. Even at my own wedding, I, there was a part of me that was like, this is a bit much. Yeah. Like I don't. Uh, too many people congratulating me. It's like not. I, I hate it. I, I. But as a middle child, I both hate attention. And desperately seek it out. <laughs> we can't be getting into this with five minutes left in the podcast. Well, we can do it next Ma- time. Mari, Mari told <laughs> me that. My, t- my next topic, middle children. She hel- she said something to me that helped me with receiving compliments in that. Say what, thank you. You say, well, thank you. Say I That's how that. you do it. But also, like, if you don't, like, if like if someone says, like, oh, I love your hair today. And you're like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's like, or it's like, it's not that nice. You're basically invalidating their opinion. Yeah, it's very rude. And making it kind of rude. Yeah. So by saying thank you, you're doing the nice thing. By like, oh, thank you. 
Yeah. Like, you respect their opinion. And ever since she told me that, my brain has been rewired for accepting compliments. I still don't like them, but I'm able to accept them now because I understand what's going on. Yeah. I accept every compliment someone gives me. I know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that wasn't a compliment. No, uh, um... <laughs> No, you're pretty good at accepting compliments. Like your your mind is is suited for that. Life's like, you know the compliments are nice. It's too short. To hear you're good about dishing them out too. You're you're probably you. Oh, Ryan's up there too. Actually, you both are really good about reminding our team that they're, they're well deserved of praise. And I just don't like when they give it back to me. Yes, yes, I hate it. Because, well, you're not as deserving. Yeah. <laughs> I th- and I and that's kind of what's at the crux of it. No, no, no. You're very deserving. Right? <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's more like please stop acknowledging me as a human. Which, yeah, I guess to close out birthdays too. I think that's also this may not this may seem like a crazy thought that's not even linked, but it's also why I like Christmas so much. Which is every we're celebrating everybody exactly. Mm-hmm. It's a celebration mm-hmm. for well, not everybody Christians, just Christians. <laughs> Well, everybody that is partaking—is that the look, Matt? <laughs> everybody that's partaking mm, uh, partaking in Christmas, like for instance, if you're giving out gifts at the tree, no one's like honed in on you while you're opening a present. Like, do you like it? Everyone's opening presents, so it's just oh, like, you don't you go don't around. Turns? We do go around and take turns, oh. but it's not as much pressure as one gift after another. Did I ever tell you about what I asked for for my like fourth uh, fourth grade Christmas present? I'd love to know. Mm-hmm. I'll end with this. Is this how we're we can close out we can this? unpack this later too. Okay, you t- say what it is, and then we'll talk about it next time. We'll see if okay. I can restrain from asking at least a couple questions. Okay, I asked for an algebra textbook. Okay. All right. Now I. I it mean, was received. <laughs> it was received. That's how he accepts now, gifts too. Did you ask? <laughs> <laughs> well, what a journey we've gone on today. We've learned so much. In Pod Watcher. Yep. Here on Pod Watcher. That's correct. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of Pod Watcher. Subscribe. Review five stars that's right if you can subscribe to the youtube channel or wherever you're listening to this podcast don't act like you can't and uh well that's true you just want to give them the option don't you must subscribe and you must rate the show five stars because that does help us continue to make this show for you if you do like it um and also you can follow us on socials at uh at we are watcher across the the game and shane's at shane Maday, steven's at steven k Lim. KW. KW Lemon, and I'm at Ryan S. Bergara on Twitter and at Ryan Bergara on Instagram because there's a Ryan Bergara in the, the Philippines who will not relinquish the username to me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, him and I. Fight him. him and, he's the only other Ryan Bergara on the planet. Him and I chat sometimes. That's sweet. 